Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. For those of you that don't know me, I'm Rita and I'm a third year medical student in the UK. For today's video, I've decided to film a couple of things I wish I knew when I was either starting med school or in my first two years. I think now that I'm in third year, I can just look back on the preclinical years and there's just so much I wish I had done and so much I wish I knew that would have made my life so much easier. If you are already in your clinical years, I wonder if you agree with what I'm about to say or not. The first thing that I think is super worth mentioning, but I definitely did not know this when I first started, and it's that you actually really deserve to be there, so you need to act like it. I mean, I was so scared. I just thought, what if I fail? What if I leave? The first question I asked on the first day of med school, they held this assembly with all the students, and I literally sat front row, raised my hand and said, so what happens if you fail? <laughs> that was the first question I asked. I was ready to fail because I was just like, there is no way that I can compete with all these people. There is a room with 200 people around me and obviously they're all gonna be way smarter than I am. But if you got in, you got your UK cat or your BMAT, you got your A-levels, your IB, you made it through the interview, you deserve to be there and you just really need to act like it. So the second thing that I wish I knew was how important it is to be friends with people in older years. Oh my God, this saves your life actually. <laughs> my uni, what they do is they pair up all the incoming students with a person in the year above or two people in the year above and then they're considered your parents and you're like their child so that they make you feel comfortable. My parents gave me this folder filled with notes of other students and their first year notes, second year notes and all of that. So I use that religiously. I mean, I'm telling you, I use those parenting notes on a daily basis now just because you want to see what did other people study. My parents were great. They gave me so much advice. They gave me so many tips. You can just network with them and chill with them and make them your friends. And you get the added benefit that whenever you have a question, they will answer it for you because they've been through this and they know it kind of related to this is to not be afraid to ask for things so before i start any year i will email students above like older than me in different years and i will be like hey do you have any tips for the year so when i started my first clinical year which is this year i emailed like six people from different year groups above me saying hi like i'm a third year do you have any tips what are the best resources what textbooks should i use what did you do that I should do? No, no, no. Just ask, ask, ask because you will not go anywhere if you don't have the right information. So the fourth thing is that, well, the hardest part of med school is not the knowledge. Like the knowledge is chill. We've done A-levels, you've done IB, you've done UK cal. Oh my God, if you've done the UK cal, I think you can do anything. I think the hardest thing is knowing how to study. So what resources to use, which ways to write your notes finding a method that works for you takes so much trial and error i mean oh my god i genuinely thought i would fail because i didn't know if my method was gonna work so what i did was ask people in older years what they did and then i just trialed so i did my first month it was all pen and paper i realized that was falling behind so i switched to only typing up lectures but then like writing flashcards i still felt like that was taking me way too much time so you know you just progressively find something that works for you and stick to it this one is just a side thing that i only learned this year i mean i'm sure i could have figured this out but i didn't basically you only study anatomy in the non-clinical years so that's year one and two at least in my uni and whoa I did not take that seriously enough and I wish I had. So if you're studying anatomy, do it well, know your shit, because once you enter clinical, they will ask you, what nerve do you think this is? What vein do you think this is? And you're like, oh, I'm not sure, could it be this? You don't wanna be that person. I am that person every day and it sucked. So yeah, you, oh my God, the amount of times I have been asked to identify something and I don't even know like, what I'm looking at. I couldn't remember portal vein when I was scrubbing in to a liver transplant. Like it's the portal vein. How do you not remember the portal vein? But they were just like, okay, so what happens when food is digested? Where does that go? 
was like the intestines they were like yeah and then from the intestines where does it go and i was like the blood flow they're like okay and then how does it get detoxified and i was like the liver i i felt so stupid but i could not remember they played hangman with me at one point where they were like okay like what are the arteries and the veins and the liver it starts with a p i was like posterior anyway you don't want to be that person you need to know your anatomy in your first two years your first year however your uni works just to make sure you're not falling behind and embarrassing yourself on the ward so this is an interesting one because i think it's very divided half the people will tell you oh my god first and second year are, are made to enjoy your life you need to go out you need to have as much fun as you can but in reality, the first two years, you have so much time. If you're aspiring to go into a career that's gonna be super competitive, like surgery or something like that, you need to start building your portfolio. And the best way to build your portfolio is get involved in research, get involved in leadership, get involved in societies that will give you something you can put on your portfolio and on your CV. And I wish, I wish I had known this, but you don't need to be an old medical student to get involved in research, I would recommend a first year student to email the prof in January of their first year and be like, hey, is there any research I can help? I don't have any previous experience, but I'm willing to work on my skills and I'm here to help you. They will not ask you to write up a paper that you've never, that you don't even know what to do. They're probably gonna give you a few numbers and tell you to calculate the average. And then you might get your name on a publication, you might get a poster, or you might not get anything, but you'll get skills that once you reach third year, fourth year, fifth year, and you wanna get involved in real research, you have these skills that you've built up. So if you can, start early. That being said, you really should enjoy the whole college experience in the first two years because that's the only time you're gonna get it. Once you're not in preclinical medicine anymore, you're never on campus. Do the whole going out, just live life like a college student in those first two years. After that, you have to wake up so early all the time and attend these ward rounds and bedside teachings super early. Obviously it's doable a couple times, but it's just, you're not gonna get five years of a crazy college experience. You're gonna get two at the max. So make sure you make the best of it while also saving some time to build on your portfolio and advance your skill set. So <laughs> this one is probably going to be seen as rude by some people, but it's the truth. So I don't really care. Um, basically, you shouldn't be naive because people around you are competitive. I think 95% of people are nice and will help you. and you can work in a team but there will be that five percent where they will lie they will be competitive they will sneak around i genuinely thought that we're all in this together so we can all do this together but no don't think that just because nobody's doing anything then you're fine i don't want to offend anyone but i just want to tell you like don't be naive don't think that people aren't studying people are secretly studying or secretly acing things and not telling you. On the flip side, people can be super, I don't even know what to call it, arrogant, uh, show off, where they'll tell you, oh, I'm doing so well, I've got all these flashcards and all these colors, and make you feel so bad, make you feel like you're gonna fail because you don't know anything and you haven't done all these beautiful flashcards with multicolors, but that's just fake. Like maybe it works for them, but it might not work for you. And I think if anyone is trying to show off how much work they've done, it's just to feed their own insecurity of maybe not knowing the content. Just go at your own pace. Don't compare yourself to anyone at all. Your only competition is yourself. And now I've just got two more like random tips that are genuinely things I just wish I knew. Um, first of all, you need like professional clothing. So every time you go to the hospital or to GP, you need to be wearing a proper work outfit like suit pants and a nice blouse for guys and like a nice dress or skirt or blouse for a girl and also don't buy textbooks as soon as you start wait and see if your library has them if there are older people selling them because you can often get them at a discount price i mean i sold some textbooks i bought for 50 pounds for like 10 pounds so just don't buy them super fast so these are all the 
quick tips I have. I wonder if any of you have felt the same thing in med school, but overall it's an amazing experience and it's been so surreal being here. It's really fun. You learn so much. You're never bored and people are amazing. Okay, other than those 5%, but the rest of the people are amazing. If you're planning on going into med school, it is an incredible experience. And if you already are in it, well, I hope this video will help you maximize the time you might have left in your preclinical years. If you liked my video, please subscribe, like the video, comment, you know, just do what you do. And I will see you guys next time.